Hello, my dear students and the rest of the learners. Welcome to part three in an 11 part series of tutorials on database application using Microsoft Access. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss on how to design a database. My name is Meme JM, or you can simply call me Emily Swap. Before you use Microsoft Access to build the tables, forms, and other objects that you make up your database, it is important to take time to design your database. Goon database design is the keystroke to creating a database that does, does what you want it to do effectively, accurately, and efficiently. In designing a database, some important questions that must be asked include, what is the purpose of the database? What questions do you want the database to answer? What reports do you want it to produce? How do you want the database sorted? The following is therefore the guideline on designing a good database that will require little time to maintain. Number one, carefully stand the requirements of the user in order to define all the data inputs, outputs, and relationships required. Number two, design and draft the database on the paper in order to determine the number of files or tables required. Number three, divide the information into separate fields, records, and tables to allow flexibility in manipulating the database. This process of dividing information into independent tables to avoid repetition of data entry items is referred to as normalization. Number four, define a field for each table that will be used to identify each record uniquely, which we call a primary key. Number five, give the most important fields the first priority when constructing a table structure. Important fields are those that are used in sorting and querying a database. Number six, design data entry forms that are needed for the database. The following are therefore the steps that you can follow in designing a database. Number one, determine the purpose of your database and how it is used. Know what information you want from the database by talking to people who will use it. Brainstorm about the questions that you and they would like the database to answer. Then sketch out the reports you would like it to produce. Gather the forms you currently use to record your data. Then examine well-designed databases that are similar to the one that you are about to design. Number two, determine the tables that you need. Sketch out and rework your design on paper first. Then divide up pieces of information by keeping these fundamental design principles in mind. The first one is that a table should not contain duplicate information and the information should not be duplicated between tables in order to be able to update easily. Secondly, each table should contain information about one subject for easy maintenance. A step number three is determine the fields that you need. Relate each frame directly to the subject of the table. Don't include derived or calculated data, that is data which is as a result of an expression. Include all the information that you need. Then store information in its smallest logical parts. Number four, 
Identify the field or films with the unique values in each record, which we call the primary key. This field connects information stored in separate tables. It uniquely identifies each individual record in the table. Number five, determine the relationship between tables. This tells Microsoft Access how to bring related information back together again in meaningful ways. Number six, refine your design. Study the design and detect any flaws that might remain so that you can change the database design before you have filled the tables with the data. Enter sample data into your tables so that you can be able to test your design. Then create the queries to test your relationships and see if you can get the results that you want. Then create rough drafts of your forms and reports and see if they show the data you expect. Number seven, enter data and create other database objects. Once you are satisfied with the table structures. So, once you are satisfied with the table structures and or existing data in the tables, then create any queries, forms, reports, data access pages, macros, modules, amongst others that you would like to have in your database. Number eight, use Microsoft Access Analysis tools to refine the design of your database. The two access tools that can be used to refine the design of your database are, number one, the Table Analyzer Wizard. This wizard analyzes the design of one table at a time and can propose new table structures and relationships if appropriate. And they can also, or using it, you can also be able to divide a table into new related tables if that makes sense. The second tool is the performance analyzer. The performance analyzer can analyze your entire database and make recommendations and suggestions for improving it. The following is therefore a procedure of creating a database using Microsoft Access. Number one, you click on Start button, then point or click. Click on All Apps and select MS Access. For example, Access 2016. Then click Blank Desktop Database on the window that appears. Number three, Specify the name of your database and the file name. Number four, browse for the location or a folder where your database is to be stored by clicking on the browse button. Select it and click OK. Number five, click create button to save the database and wait for it to load. The following, is therefore a sample demonstration on how to create a database called a MediSwap portal using Microsoft Access. So to create a new blank database called a MediSwap portal, we are going to proceed as follows. The first step is to click on Start menu or Start button, on Start button. This is the Start button, so click on Start button. Then you proceed and click on All Apps or All Programs, depending on the version or type of Windows operating system that you are using. So in this case, I'm going to click on all apps. Once you click on all apps or all programs, 
you scroll for or you crawl on the list of programs listed in the menu and choose access 2016. So you can scroll using your mouse button. So let's look for access 2016. If you have another version, for example, access 2013, you scroll and click on Microsoft Access 2013. In my case, I'll click on Access 2016. Here it is. So I'll click on Access 2016. Once Access 2016 has been loaded, then you proceed and create our new or your new blank desktop database. So this is blank access database option. This one here, this is blank desktop database. So you can click on this option if you want to create a blank desktop database. Or in other words, you want to create a database from scratch. However, you can make use of existing templates under various categories, such as business, logs, history, lists, personal, contacts, among us, any other that may be listed based on the type of Microsoft Access or version of Microsoft Access that you are making use of. If you want to proceed by using an existing a template, you just click on it. For example, you can click on desktop tracking, existing database template, and proceed with the steps to be generated. However, in our case here, we are going to make use of, or we are going to click on blank desktop database. So let me click on blank desktop database. So just click on blank desktop database. A blank desktop database dialog box will appear, as you can see here. So you browse the location where you want it to store it through this button here, browse for a location to put your database. So which action should you take first? Is it to type the name of the database and the file name or to browse for the location? It's good or advisable to give your database a name first and a file name. So let me give my database a file name. So you click on the file name box inside there, press backspace key to delete any existing proposed name and type your name. Our name is MLSWAP. MLD swap hotel. So you type MLD swap hotel. Then I'll click on browse to specify the location where my database will be kept. So let me click on browse button here. You can see we have been taken to a screen from where we can do or we can browse our location from. So I'll click on local disk C. Then I scroll. I click on the personal materials folder. Then I'll click open. Then I want to go to YouTube content. So I'll click on YouTube content and click open. And the YouTube content, I want to click on MLSWAP ICT videos like that. Then I'll click open. And then I want to click on applications 
or double click on applications, then click on databases and click open. This is where I want my database to be kept. If there's an existing database with the same name, like as you can see, we have this one here, an error message will be displayed. So already our file name is MLSWAP Hotel. That's the name of one database. And under save as type, you can specify the type of database you want to create. My type is Microsoft Access 2007 2016 database. So let it remain that way. And then you click on OK. So let me click on OK. Back to our blank desktop database. You can see that now our name is here, MLSWAP Hotel. And the location is already indicated in this or below the name of our database. And you can see where it is stored. This is stored in the hard disk, that is hard disk, which is specified as C colon backslash. Then personal materials in our folder called personal materials, South Florida YouTube content, South Florida MDSAP ICT videos, other subfolder applications, then subfolder databases. Once you are through with giving your database a name, and specifying the location where it will be stored, you now click on Create button. So click on Create. And then you just wait. You can see we have been prompted with an error message that the file that already exists. Do you want to replace the existing file? I'll click on Yes. Remember, this message will only appear if your database has a name that is similar to an existing one. Otherwise, if there's no other database that is existing with the same name, this error message will not be displayed. So let me click on yes. And with that, my dear students and the rest of the learners, you can see that we have been taken to a database, our new database window from where we can proceed and perform other operations in our database. And as you can see, the name of our database is on top here on the title bar, and it reads a MediSwap portal. And that's how, that's how you create a new database. So in the rest or in the subsequent tutorials, we are going to learn on how we, you can proceed to create various objects within your new database. And with that, we have come to the end of part three of the series. You can now continue to part four of the 11 part series in which I am going to discuss and illustrate or demonstrate on how to create and design tables in a database. Congratulations for learning part three of 11 on designing a database in database application series. You can access the rest of the tutorials in this series, as well as other computer or ICT videos by clicking or tapping on MLSWAP ICT YouTube channel below this video. You can also visit MLSWAP Life Skills YouTube channel for free life skills, motivational and inspirational resources. To subscribe to the channel, tap on subscribe button below this video in YouTube if it's not currently reading as subscribed. For any further correspondence, kindly write it to us through the email 
mlswap at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening to me. Let's meet in part four of this series and God bless.